What's your minimum specification? If you watch the podcast I do with George, you'll know that there's one topic that really gets him riled up. It's a company called Tachium. They've been promising an AI accelerator now for almost seven years. It's crazy. If you've not been following this story, uh, it's the CEO is the guy who essentially co-founded Sandforce, the SSD controllers back in the day when SSDs were brand new. Uh, very successful CEO, and he decided to do a startup called Tachium, whose goal was to produce an AI-based processor that was both CPU and AI and was going to blow anything out of the water. That company came to the fore with a big hot chips presentation, uh, I guess like 21, 22. And everybody kind of went, what? Because it was lots of cores. It was, the cores were quite small and underpowered. And he was promising HBM, DDR, uh, lots of connectivity and whatever NVIDIA were going to produce, they were going to do it a lot better. Then came some of the issues. Aside from the criticism, the company went dark. And then we found out through court filings that they were in the process of suing the EDA company Cadence. The, uh, the reason for the suing was essentially the company felt that they were having trouble bringing up their chip, uh, but, uh, you know, getting the, like, the timing circuits closed and stuff, because they felt that Cadence were actively hampering um, their design. The, the argument was that the CEO of Cadence at the time, Lip Bhutan, is also the chairman of an AI hardware startup that would have been Tachium's um, competition. Uh, this went through the courts for, what, almost a couple of years. Um, and on the back of this, Tachyon was saying, well, hey, we weren't allowed to bid for European supercomputing contracts because we can't get our chip out. Uh, this apparently settled out of court. Uh, Tachyon started using synopsis tools. They updated the architecture. There's a great video I did um, with George and Chester from Chips and Cheese on that, where we went through the new architecture. And the new architecture sounded a lot more reasonable which is fair enough. Uh, then, you yeah, know, we heard that it was available now in FPGA emulation. There's also the promise of being able to support x86 uh, and ARM and RISC-V all on top of a custom instruction set. Then, again, the company went blank. And to be honest, we kept seeing them at shows, but there were two sales people um, and a book about the importance of compute that was about that thick. And we never really got to hear much from the company aside from the silicon wasn't ready. Now, at that time, um, they were a Series B startup, essentially, raised about $70 million, um, but didn't have a chip out yet. A few weeks ago, as this is being filmed uh, in November 25, it was announced that they had raised another sort of 220 to 50 million to reach a 300 number. And the goal with that, they said, was to finally get to a point where they were taping out their silicon for partners. And it was also declared that the investor who had done that investment was also on, you know, on the hook for about half a billion dollars um, in, in terms of hardware sales. Again, think, and we're all thinking, well, hang on, it's been a while now. Your design might not be competitive anymore. As of a few days ago, or maybe even it was yesterday, the company announced that they've updated the architecture. So we can actually have a lot more insights into what the architecture is about. So in order to do that, let me bring in George. What, what am I doing here in San Diego? Anyway, hello you fine internet folks. So as you introduced, we've had multiple versions of the Tachium architecture. Back in 2018, Tachium first announced their first revision of the Prodigy architecture, which was VLIW or very long instruction word. This was similar to Itanium back in the day, if you remember that. However, circa 2021-2022, they changed what their architecture was going to be. They moved to a much more standard out-of-order architecture, similar to AMD, Intel, Qualcomm, ARM. As of yesterday of the filming of this, of this video, they have since updated that architecture yet again. The new Prodigy architecture is an eight wide machine that is designed for a two nanometer process. We don't know who's two, but the suspicion is TSMC, which is a move from the 2021, 2022 designs, five nanometer, three nanometer, up to two nanometer. 
With that, they've now moved into the chiplet era, with each chiplet uh, having 256 cores and a package able to support up to four of those chiplets for a total of 1024 cores per package at a claimed six gigahertz. We'll get into that, but first let's talk about the actual core architecture here. So to sort of bullet point this, their L1 uh, data and instruction caches, while big, have very low associativity, only two-way. If you remember the move that AMD did from Zen 1 to Zen 2, they went from a 64K four-way uh, four associative L1i to a 32K eight-wide, uh, excuse me, eight-way L1i. AMD claimed that even though the capacity reduced due to the increase of associativity, they didn't actually see any hit rate drop. However, Tachyum L1i is 128K, but only two-way associative. Uh, similarly, their data cache is 64K, but only two-way associative. So that seems like a very strange choice to me. They're claiming that they can do up to eight branches per cycle, which I find doubtful, uh, especially considering moving down. And speaking of, they only have six ALUs of which two of those are branch units. So uh, I find this claim doubtful personally. Um, moving to sort of the more math side, the floating point and vector, vector units. They have five 12 bit vector units, but each of those pipes has effectively a 2048 bit matrix unit attached. However, not all of the matrix units can do all of the data types. For example, only three of the four matrix pipes can do FP8, while all four can do FP4 along with Tachyum's proprietary TAI set of data types. Moving to sort of out of the core and into the mesh and L2 slash L3, they have a one meg L2, however, Again, low associativity of only four-way in comparison to say 16-way on Zen 5 for the same one meg L2. But also their L2 and L3 solution is very similar to IBM's Tellum. Um, there is a good article from Chester on Chips and Cheese about how that works, but essentially there's a, a shared a shared L, the L2 can also act as the L3, as your TLDR. And the mesh is now at core clock instead of half of core clock, and each shop is 64 bytes per cycle, which means that you get approximately five terabytes per second on this mesh that they're claiming can clock up to six gigahertz. Now, this sounds like a lot until you realize that this package will have up to 24 channels of DDR5-17600. So that's 17600, which is approximately 3.4 terabytes per second of memory bandwidth. And with what Tachyum is calling memory ampl amplification, they're claiming that they can get double that with approximately 6.7 terabytes per second of memory bandwidth. If you notice, five terabytes is not 6.7 terabytes. So I really don't think that even if that bandwidth amplification works, you'll actually see a lot of benefit out of it. Um, not to mention that that mesh also has to deal with the claimed 128 PCIe 7.0 lanes, which is another off the top of my head, I believe that is three terabytes of bandwidth, I believe. So I don't know how this five terabyte mesh is gonna be able to deal with that. Oh, come on, George, move over. <laughs> move over, move mm -hmm. over. Cause, Cause I've got some bones to pick here. Um, in this document that they've sent us and we'll put a link in the video description so you can have a read as well. They've said they can do this all in a, uh, was it a 61.44 or 69.44 pin package? Uh, no, 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 no. So it's uh, 
twenty twenty three thousand for the big one. Um, for context, some of the biggest packages I've seen are like 11,000, 12,000. I'll put a picture on of a uh, PG array tester with 11,000 pins at a very fine pitch. Yeah, You've seen if, that picture. Yes, right? if, if I remember correctly, the package size is, fifth, is 150 by 120. Which, given the fact that they've said that this chip will be available for customers in Q326, <laughs> would be the largest TSMC has ever made. So, I actually don't think that is even on their roadmap for 26. Granted, they could ship the smaller version. True, true, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the one chiplet version. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, it's, it's for a company saying, hey, look, we're going to be on two nanometer uh, or, uh, in Q3 26. Mm -hmm. uh, bear in mind, whose two nanometer will be available? Uh, TSMC, but only for premium customers. Yep. Basically, AMD and Apple and uh, Intel for internal only. Yeah. Uh, Samsung, what? <laughs> so, and that's it. That's uh, all you got. Does Global Foundries have a two nanometer we don't know about? Well, Rapidus. Do you honestly think? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. Um, not by 26. 28, 29, maybe, some, but not 26. Somebody would have had to have um, charmed the pants off an executive <laughs> yeah. to have the first well, one. Well, or, 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 or they're willing to be such an early customer, they're willing for, you know, 10% yield. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, that's 10%. Uh, okay, so even with defects, even if it's like a 50% mm -hmm. yield, the parametric based on what can hit 6 gigahertz. Yeah, no. Uh -uh. 2%. You're, you're, um, you're being generous. Anyone? Yeah. Um, but you didn't even get, let me hit the best part, the 1600 watt TDP, yeah. which sounds like a lot, right? 1600 watts, but that's across a thousand cores. So you have all of 1.6 watts per core trying to clock to six gigahertz. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, if uh, you could have the sensor hub running at six gigahertz, <laughs> maybe. It's, there, are too, there are too many trans, okay. E even if each one of these chiplets is reticle sized, mm -hmm. you know, 858 square mil, yep. with 256 cores inside, mm -hmm. and I guess 32 PCIe 7 lanes, six channels of DDR5. It's it's eight channels and 92, uh, sorry, 96 lanes per chiplet. Okay, then then yeah, um, you, that, that means you only have, you know, a, 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 a million transistors, 10 million transistors per core? I, I don't know the math. I didn't do the math. But, it, 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 but what's even funnier is that they're claiming that they can do up to 16 sockets. Yeah, not in the Mac, not in the biggest one. No, no, no. The biggest one is, is o only up to eight, eight sockets. Uh, but uh, the slightly reduced version uh, with only 512 cores can mm. do uh, 16 Busy. socket. There's a reason why AMD only goes up to two and Intel doesn't make a big fuss about its eight socket platforms anymore. Well, and, and, and that's because last time I spoke to um, a guy who worked for an OEM, he said the only people who buy the eight socket systems are Russians. Well, I was gonna say SP Hada. Yeah. Or um, SAP Hada, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, um, uh, DB2 and whatever, so. Yeah. It's, I mean, we've, we, we've spoken with the company at length Mm -hmm. And they always seem very confident. Yes. About their their approach, but time and time again, uh, I th I think we've given them so much of the benefit of the doubt over the years. You know, in in saying you know, okay, even with some of these things, we we're not sure will work. We'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Just show us, you know, when silicon's ready, or hey, even show us the FPGA demo systems you've claimed to have had for the last five years. I'm not even, I'm not even going to be asking for that because they're going to be at supercomputing. I'm going to ask for the ISA manual. I want to see what they've done for their ISA. Uh, no, that's proprietary information and you have to sign a corporate NDA. No, 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 no. They said that they're going to open it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Open. <laughs> yeah, that, maybe that definition of open. I mean, um, yeah, it's... You know, I'm always happy to be proved wrong. Yes. But in in um, in this case, it's so many iterations. And okay, it's great that they've got a bunch of money. It's they. Uh, it's funny because in we said in the press release, it says it's a European investor, but then in the next paragraph, it says it's an American yep. investor. So, who is it? 
Uh, yeah. Show. It's it's the, the same argument I'm putting to other companies yeah. who are this old. Yeah. Show, show me, not tell. Show me the silicon yeah. first, but, and then show me it's running, and then show me it's running well. Yeah. Um, so some companies, you know, don't aren't ready to show anything until stage three, mm -hmm. and we get that. But you, if 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 you're if, if you're, you're claiming that you're going to be 20, 21 times the performance of NVL five seven six from the Vera Ruben yeah rack the Vera scale. Uh, Vera, uh, Vera plus Ruben Ultra even, y y and you've been saying this for years like yeah, um, but they've got money now, so they could they could they could go on for another ten. Yeah, and doing what? I don't know. I think the question we have to ask is, do we ever make any more videos on this? Let us know in the comments. And apparently YouTube has like a new hype feature and hype features are really good at promoting videos. Um, but if you like to hear more about what George says, obviously chips and cheese, but also check out the tech routine that um, we're probably gonna do one next week as we're doing yeah. this, because we're at Supercomputing. If you're at Supercomputing, say hi. Say hi, George. Hello.